All right, everybody. Happy Friday. Michael Lafito waiting for Brad Inman to join us here. I'm going to be uh, putting us live on Facebook here. And I'm going to Hi, Michael. Hi, Brad. How you doing? Good. Should I call you Mike or Michael? Oh, uh, Mike's fine. Thank oh. you for asking. So, what's the scoop, man? So we're gonna we're going to uh, get started. I'm just streaming live here. Uh, beautiful backdrop. It's a Georgia O'Keeffe painting. Oh, really? I'm trying, get, I'm trying to get rid of it. I hate those fake backgrounds. But... <laughs> you know, I uh, I had a fake background. I'm like, I'm just gonna throw my pop up in. It's better, okay. more authentic. Um, so thanks for your time today, Brad. Let me just uh, put this in here. And if you guys have any comments, please chime in below so I know where you're watching from. Some of you are watching this live on Facebook. We're streaming to various groups. And some of you are on our Zoom call. So ch chime in. We are going to be starting a new, um, I guess, promotion, Brad. We're giving away some free things. I know you guys are doing some amazing things with your Connect in June, June 2nd through the fourth. I'm looking forward to talking to you about that, but I want to uh, bring on some folks um, and, and give away some, some good things today. So we're going to be giving away a, uh, a course we created for the California Association of Realtors. So to be eligible, you're going to either A, chime in and type in a comment, B, share this Facebook Live to your group or on your Facebook uh, page, or you're going to text in the free uh, luxury to the, to the uh, phone number that we put in above. So I'm totally excited. We got Brad Amon here. For those of you that don't know Brad, you should know Brad. You should know his company. Uh, Brad puts on three amazing events a year, actually four with Disconnect, but they have every, every January in New York. It's called, uh, it's called Inman Connect. It's in New York. Hopefully this year, uh, we, nobody knows what the future is going to have with COVID-19, but uh, I look forward to it every January. And Brad, you guys put on your Connect event. Typically, it's in July. It used to be in San Francisco, and then it got moved to, to Vegas. But because of COVID-19, uh, let's start out with that. You guys are bumping it up to June 2nd to the 4th, and it's going to be done virtually, correct? Yeah, and it's going to be better than a live event, Michael. Uh, this idea that they have to be second-rate experiences is like saying that uh, a keyless lock is a, uh, a second-rate experience to losing your keys. This is going to be mind blowing. Uh, as always, quality content, quality networking, quality um, uh, business development, uh, quality exhibitors, new technologies. Um, the, only, the, only, um, the only change is instead of costing $1,500 to $2,000 between your airfare, your hotel, and your uh, registration, <laughs> it is only fifty dollars but that requires you be a select member and select membership now is pretty no-brainer there's a three-month free trial you can get all of our articles at inman free and you just have to sign up for that trial and then once you have that trial you can uh, receive connect now for only 50 bucks so instead of two grand you're paying fifty dollars for an awesome even better experience oh that's great and uh, i get I get on the daily uh, daily mornings. I get the uh, the updates, and you guys are pr producing some amazing content. I, I appreciate it. Actually, this morning, uh, you guys had something on about online views and Zillow, and and you could drop down to which state you're in to determine how there are more people looking online today than yeah. there were even last year at this time, or even a month ago. So again, really good about you, Mike, data. But Yas, my wife and I are really enjoying looking at houses and real estate right now, and. Uh, we're kind of always in the market and um, I just think it's, there's going to be some opportunities for buyers. And I think uh, there's just, you know, it's fun to look at. It's fun to look at it. And we're in real estate, right? It's about yeah. houses. We're, we're in real estate. I tell people we're in the Tinder industry for houses. People are swiping left like or swiping that. right. There you go. So uh, with no unintended consequences, no unintended. That's right. So, uh, June 2nd through the 4th. So it's going to yeah. be online. Oh, by the way, I, you know, you always got to do. So it's called Connect Now. It's June 2nd for, to June 4th. Now everyone wants to know the location. So the location is in your house. 
So move around the furniture. If you could, you know, cook a little coffee for 10,000 people and also make sure if for me, I like some half and half in my coffee, if you could arrange that. For 25 years, you've all been coming to us for Connect and now we're coming to you. And for all the people over the years that couldn't afford to come to Connect, now you can. And, uh, but we're coming to you and we're really excited about that switcheroo in terms of you having to get on planes and go through Homeland Security and pack your bags and unpack your bags and get drunk and party all night with your <laughs> friends and then have a hangover the next day. Um, there will be no temptations uh, to get drunk with your friends. You get drunk by yourself in a tent. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, what's the, is it just go to Inman, uh, Inman Connect? Yeah, if you go to Inman.com, you can't miss it. There'll be a promo there somewhere, but make sure you register uh, for Inman Select first. All right, very good. So thank you. I'm a big yeah. fan of what you guys do. Looking forward to June 2nd to the 4th. You guys provide the best of the best. And what I like about it in an industry that sometimes can be dinosauric, like the, you know, like the mothership, things move slowly sometimes in real estate. You know, and then you guys are quick. You bring on the best. If something is trending, uh, you guys are bringing uh, those speakers on. So thank you. Yeah, we and do I trending to... and bending. By the way, let's give away uh, three... Uh, connect now registrations Perfect. but my only requirement is that it's your listeners that are select members if they're a select member um, they can confirm that then uh, you can pick them my only required criteria is this michael no big shots just every um active working realtors and the reason i say that is i have i have without any authority without any certification i have declared may the month of the realtor and the reason i've declared that is because we're going to have some dog days this summer and the entire industry has to flip the pyramid and it's not for the fat cats in the top everybody at the top and everybody in the middle all of us that depend on realtors need to support the active everyday realtor michael would not be able to do this show michael would not be in business inman news would not be in business zilla would not be in business realogy would not be in business kw would not be in business Remax would not be in business if it wasn't for the hardworking everyday realtor who wakes up every morning really without a job. They're commission based. You don't get health insurance. You don't get paternity, maternity leave. You don't get dog insurance. Um, you don't get a paycheck dropped in your uh, your bank account on the 15th to 30th of every month. So again, I have officially, unofficially Love declared it. May is the month of the realtor. And that's so we can all get behind the everyday working realtor so that they get through the 2020 dog day summer. Uh, that's awesome. Thank you. And I, I think uh, you're spot on with that. I appreciate where you come from. You got a servant mentality and uh, you know, we, we normally have some questions that kind of guide this luxury lunch and learn and, uh, but you wanted to flip the script. You had some, some really cool things that you, you wanted to talk a little bit about. Well, I, you know, I can ask and answer any question you all want. You know, I'm not a forecaster. I'm not a futurist. People think I am. I'm an observer. I'm a journalist and we observe what's going on. We mirror that. And quite frankly, let's take economists. I've been covering them for 30 years in the old newspaper days to the LA Times to the digital world. And they're wrong almost all the time. And I guarantee you they're all wrong now. And so... People that say this is what's going to happen in the fall with any definitiveness at all. I mean, I think Charlie Munger, uh, Warren Buffett's wingman, said none of us know. And no one does know. There's too much, too many moving parts, too many complexities to the economy, uh, too many uh, uncertainties around uh, COVID-19. So I think the best we can do right now is, is saddle up, look up just maybe a month or two. And so... I just don't make those forecasts, but if you want me to comment on anybody and anything, I'm happy to do it. I we're into the first amendment. So just feel free to ask them whatever you want, but yeah, no, far, you're, far away, you're, Michael, and I'll go for it. You, you are uh, unfiltered. This is like the fireside chat that, uh, uh, Laura Brady and Chad had at the uh, concierge auctions key event. Uh, that was great uh, discussion. So first off your podcast. So you're bringing some amazing people on. You have your own show. What's the name of that show? It's called The Daily Dispatch. It comes out about two a day. And, uh, you know, we've had some great guests. And, uh, you know, it's an even playing field you know, now, Michael. The, the big shots are at home in their kitchens, too. They may be nicer than the rest of ours, but, you know, everyone's more or less the same. Um, and so this, you know, people in high towers and big fancy offices telling us how we should behave. Those days are kind of over. We're all kind of equal. And uh -huh. so it's really nice to be able to 
talk to these people in their living room with their dogs barking and their kids screaming. And, you know, that's, that's reality. I had a really, really profound chat with uh, John Payton, who's the CEO of Realty Franchise Services. And, you know, he got the virus and he and his wife and his son and his son, I think, brought it back from spring break and they were down under. It was tough and they got through it, but he told the tale of that. So there's a lot of good stories. Helen and Anna, you know, uh, I asked her, did anything prepare you for this, Helen? And she revealed for the first time publicly that she said, yeah, Brad, when I lost my son and uh, I could, as a father, um, as a grandfather, could really relate to it. I can't even imagine the level of pain one must feel when they lose a child. Mm -hmm. So it's been revelatory, you know, talking to Ryan Snyder, the CEO of Realogy, who I said, where are you sitting and what are you looking at? And he said, the kitchen sink, you know, he wasn't in some big fancy office with a bunch right. of clocks on the wall. So it's all been it's all been really insightful. And then just everyday working agents, I've combined things where I have a tech guy with a couple realtors and you know who get a, a lot more saucy than those tech guys and uh -huh. just really good conversations and chats just trying together to figure this out again no one has the answer so we're just doing more and more our our readership as yours does they really want to participate michael yeah. and they're sitting at home and they have opinions and ideas and this is a unique moment where you know we can get lots and lots of people up on the stage talking you know on our town halls that Inman does every couple of weeks to Inman, you know, connect now to, to my podcast. And it just, it's a really great time to just implode that pyramid and turn it yeah. upside down. So the daily dispatch, a uh, couple, you know, I've, I've listened to some of those again, is that on iTunes? Yeah, go to Inman.com. I made the, I made what we used to call in the, in the newspaper business. I made, I made the fold, meaning I mean, I made the front page, but I'm still below the fold. And that's fine because if you look at Inman these days, it's totally turned into, thanks to a really unbelievable executive team, they really turned into a service journalism. Everything about what we do now is to service our members during, you know, it's turned out to be a very difficult time. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Very good. Very good. Um, so, you know, again, I'm not going to, you're not an economic, uh, you know, I'm not going to ask you crystal ball type questions, but, you know, t talk to me about one of the things I, I, I talk about is called win at home. So we're, you know, we're, we're, we're working from home. I got kids yelling in the background as we speak. I got my dog next to me right now. And so, you know, a lot of stress. I think there's going to be a lot of, you know, you know, a lot of things that people aren't even talking about necessary in everyday media, as far as mental health, you know, that sort of thing. You know, any, any, any things that uh, you've picked up or any best practices, words of advice for those that, that are not used yeah. to working in these environments? Yeah, I, I think, um, you know, I was alone here by myself for six weeks. My wife, Yaz, was in Florida. She had to go back east to help her mother get to Morocco. And so she um, finally came back. We decided to go for it. She flew on a JetBlue flight with only 34 people. Very safe. We feel good about it. We're kind of social distancing now. But I really wasn't alone, Michael, during that time. Um, about two weeks into it, I looked out the front yard and there was some unicorns grazing in the front yard. Beautiful, beautiful, big, beautiful unicorns. And after a week or two, I learned when I stepped out that they talked. And so every morning I had a chat with uh, my, my group of unicorns. And then Wednesday when Yaz came back that morning before I went to LAX to pick her up, the unicorns said that they would be leaving um, that day and I wouldn't be able to talk to them ever again. And I was kind of sad and I asked why, and they said, well, we gotta move on to the next household where someone is alone. And uh, the reason I bring that up is if you haven't been angry, or if you haven't had a panic attack, or if you haven't woke up at two, three, four in the morning with a sweat attack over what's gonna happen next, if you didn't cry, if you didn't yell, if you didn't scream, then you're not human. And you know they have this thing in the industry now in self-help, like you, you need to take a training session on being authentic. And I always get really upset by that because that is the stupidest thing I ever heard in my life. Authenticity is just being who you are, not trying to do anything. And that includes, you know, all the characteristics I just described. That, that's what human's about. And what I really like now is I've seen unbelievable displays of humanity. And that's a different thing where people are empathetic and helping each other. And about three weeks, four weeks ago, I got a bag in my front yard uh, at my door. And I, at first I, oh, I hope it's not a bomb, but who would want to kill me? You know, so that didn't really worry me. And in there was two things I like, a whole chicken and a, 
and a leg of lamb. And the person that left them had to know me well enough to know that I liked those two things. And there was no note and there was no follow-up text. There was no business card. There was no expectation. And it, you know, Michael, it didn't come from Zillow. It didn't come from Open Door. It didn't come from DoorDash. Um, it didn't come from Realtor.com. It didn't come from Remax headquarters. It didn't come from Realogy headquarters. It came from a real human being who knows me, and that happened to be my local realtor, Byron. And that's what humanity is about now. And um, that's the kind of service, not sales. And not that people don't have to get down to business and get the transactions that are still left there. But this idea of service over sales. Now, my relationship with my realtor has always been one of a professional relationship. I am really close to the people in the Inman community, but socially, I, you know, I'm not that close. I mean, I have my friends and my family. And um, so this isn't about having a friendship. This is about uh, Byron being there when I needed him as a professional. And what he did was an extension of being professional. Um, but in the ways that I think we expect from our, from our real estate community. And so I think the bar has been raised for the industry to be a little less slick, a little less salesy, a less, little less about themselves, less about transactions, and maybe start doing things like that, because that'll get Byron plenty of business, already has his relationship and how he handled my transaction. Um, but maybe we'll start saying, hey, that's more valuable than drip marketing and things that we do that are really kind of awful. I mean, think about the term drip marketing. I think that's what's called water torture in the early part of the century. I mean, do we really want to drip market people? Right, <laughs> and maybe right, we need right. to, I don't know. But some of the things we have done with technology and over the years, you know, maybe this is time to throw some of those bad practices out. Yeah. I definitely think uh, people's priorities have changed, right? This is a, is a first, right? I mean, you talk about the Spanish flu, whatever, 100, 103 years ago, but and with technology and people on Twitter, on other side of the world can t tweet something in real time and, and news and everything else. There's just so much toxicity out there. I, I choose to focus on the positive. That was a great you know, story. He didn't leave a note. He didn't, you know, he just knows you, probably knew, you know, because Yaz wasn't in town that, hey, probably could use a pick me up and that's exactly. really knowing your client. Exactly. That's awesome. Good. Well, I, I you know, I, I know that you're, you're busy. Um, uh, one question I do have for you though, and you're professional. I can ask me whatever you want. I'll answer anything. Okay. All right. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, in your professional opinion, uh, those agents, those team leaders, those broker owners that are going to be most successful when, the quarantine period, the COVID-19 shelter in place period is re removed. Are those that have blank in common? Integrity, which has been the case as long as real estate sales have been around. And it's true now more than ever. I think we're seeing genuine people and we're seeing, you know, hustlers and we're seeing people that don't shoot straight. And we're seeing people that are scammers and schemers and, Integrity always wins. Mm -hmm. That's great advice. That's simple. Uh, uh, one one last I mean, question, but before we it. do that. Let's say it's oh. a referral business, Michael. And it is, right? Particularly in luxury. And yeah. uh, I go through an experience with someone that's not integral or, or shows signs of, you know, cutting corners or taking shortcuts. And even if they say it's to my benefit, you know, I'm probably not going to refer that person to anybody. Because next time, or they gossip, which is not integrity. They talk about their competitors, which is not integrity. Or they put down the realtor on the other side, which is not integrity. Or they make fun of the seller, not integral. Um, you know, it's pretty simple. The golden rule is, you know, just follow simple things. And those are the people I refer. And actually, I think that's who most consumers refer. I mean, they got to be smart. They got to know the market. They got to not leave money on the table. They got to be all those professional things. But integrity is like the backbone of success in real estate, is my experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's great. Thank you for sharing that. And I would agree. Uh, D Daniel Kamen, who won the Nobel Peace Prize winner, uh, and I might not uh, verbatim, but he basically said people would rather do business with someone that they like even if that person is offering a lower quality product service or, or service at a higher price versus doing someone 
business with someone they don't like, even if that person offers a better service. So the point is be likable, be authentic, right? Uh, have high integrity, all good, uh, good tips. Um, any well, last, last words? Study once done, I wish I could quote it to attribute it properly, but it basically looked at doctors that were sued for, um, you know, actions and surgery, whatever the case may be. And the doctors that were sued were the doctors that weren't very likable, more likely to be sued by their patients. And the doctors that were likable were less likely to be sued. Now that a little scary, meaning the likable doctors got away with doing shenanigans maybe, but it, it was kind of amazing that that showed up, but it, it consistent with what you just said. What yeah. else you got, Mike? Far away. Let's, yeah, let's, so let's go through all those damn questions you sent me. <laughs> all right, well, we'll, we'll continue. So, um, you know, you you have multiple properties, uh, you know, in California, I believe you have a place in Florida as well, and, and maybe elsewhere. Um, in your opinion, uh, when working with agents, I, I, you talk about integrity. Talk to me about your uh, experience. If an agent, talking about high end and luxury in this case, if an agent maybe doesn't know the market, doesn't know the clientele, doesn't have experience perhaps, um, in your opinion, based on being with top agents, teams, different brands, different brokerages across the world, like in your experience, I should say, have, has it has that been obvious to you when you're dealing with somebody that's, you know, not experienced, uh, doesn't know what they're talking about, perhaps is is BSing their way through answers, you ask questions, you know, t talk to me about your experience as, as a home purchaser or seller. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I picked bad realtors before and it's a terrible experience. I never use them again, I never refer them again. And I fired realtors midway through the process because they were incompetent. They had all this maybe frivolous things, how they dress and big smile and nice car and, but it's just BS, you know, Th these are, the stakes are high, particularly in luxury. When you buy a piece of property or sell a piece of property, it's huge. And, you know, you just, I don't think anybody I know, high net worth wants to deal with people that are, that aren't super professional. I think it's kind of obvious to your listening audience, you know, that yeah. absolutely. And that, you know, I've had, I've had good and bad. What do you got next? Let's fire away, man. All right. Let, let, two more, <laughs> two more. We can also, oh, do more. You can also, someone did the other day, you might try it. They go, Zillow, Realtor.com, they go through a list of about 10 companies, 10 things, and I, I far away uh, my opinion, but you don't have to do All that. Right, I like that. I like it. So so are these like one, come one, to your mind. <laughs> one, one word answers? Yeah, let's go. All right. Well, I don't know if Red, I'll do one word, but I'll try really hard, Mike. Redfin. Um, excellent. Zillow. Excellent. Um. Oh, I'll do I'll, Zillow. Influential. Influential. And that, by that, I mean the consumer. Okay. And by Redfin, I mean, I think he runs a good shop. Uh, Compass. Um, fast. Meaning they're a fast moving company. They're, they're, whether or not they're a tech company is a big debate in the industry, but they're funded with the tech culture, which moves really fast doesn't worry about breaking things, doesn't worry too much about, um, you know, collateral damage and got huge market share. And by the way, that was the history of Realogy. That's how Send It started, Henry Silverberg. He didn't, he, he was ruthless. Uh, Bill Gates was ruthless. Founder of Facebook was ruthless. The founder of Uber was ruthless. The founder of Google was ruthless. And that whole tech culture, but it's happened in our, you know, marketplace with Realogy. When they went out and bought everybody, I remember the days when some Sotheby's executives just couldn't believe how Senate was running the show. People from outside that didn't know the industry and they thought misbehaving. So people think this is new or different or Robert's some unique animal. No, he's not. He's just like a lot of things, you know, in the tech world and not too different from a big piece of history of the real estate. We always forget Dave Linegar is super controversial because of NAR trying to try to put a stop to David Linegar. I mean, it's not like this is new. This has gone on. People come to this industry. They see this fragmented industry. They see a huge opportunity to co consolidate share. They have either Wall Street behind them, which is the, the, you know, the story of Send It way back in the days pre realogy And it's a story of lots and lots of companies. Um, look at you know, Zillow. They just came in and took share from all the broker owners and everybody else when it came to consumer habit. And they created a consumer habit that is forever taken the consumer away from the broker owners and the franchises. There was a time when you could 
look at who had the most web traffic and it was the big companies. And now clearly it's Zillow and, and Realtor.com and Redfin. So I, I, I sit passionately in a, in, a, in a seat where I look at it all and I don't have favorites. I really don't. I mean, yeah. we reported on Compass when they were climbing because they were doing something every day, buying Pacific Union, buying this company, buying that, stealing realtors. Uh, taking middle they, they bought the company that I was with. That was a, with a boutique in Chicago called yeah. Conlon. They, they purchased our company. So we reported and people said we favored Compass. And I said, why? Because you, you're always uh, reporting on them. And I said, well, you're not making any news. They are. And that, you know, now we're not reporting much in Compass because guess what? They're not making any news. They got their sure. heads down trying to survive. Sure. So, boy, that All was right. a long one. That was a long that, one. Murder. That was a long one. Let's keep going. I got, we got you for five more minutes. I got a couple more. I like where you're going. Right, first one, uh, about 1.4 million realtors pre-COVID-19. Fast forward uh, a year from now, in your opinion, how many will there be? Well, I would have gone with the popular notion there would be fewer, which is what the industry always says. Um, but I was on the phone call with Ryan Surant the other day, very savvy, smart guy in New York City, and he described how he came in the industry Massive unemployment, not massive, nothing like now, but big unemployment rates. Then it was like 11 or 12%. We're now talking about 25 to 30%. And that's when he came into the industry. And that's when all his friends came into the industry. And because he was of that age group and he couldn't get a job. But almost anyone can get a real estate license if they're halfway intelligent, right? And then the hustlers make it. And he said his friends in Wall Street and elsewhere, hospitality and New York are calling him and saying, I want to enter the industry because I can't get a job and I watch what you do. You can teach me. So I think he runs. I love Ryan because he runs against the current of popular wisdom thinking, Oh, the COVID-19 is going to thin out the industry and only good will survive. And no, nah, not true. I think Ryan's nailed it. I, I would bet on Ryan's prediction than the traditional notion that will thin out the ranks. Now, is this going to be, I call it the dog day summer of 2020. The dog day summer of 2020, some realtors aren't going to make very much money. Um, but guess what? In the summer of 2019, a lot of realtors didn't make very much money. What's new? And uh, people don't give up their license very easily. They hang on to them through the tough times. Uh, it's not like they're leaving in droves. You know, they're leaving in droves from California in the U-Haul uh, research numbers, but they're not leaving. Realtors aren't leaving real estate. So yeah. I, I, they're leaving yeah. Illinois, by the way, as well. I know you're from Illinois. <laughs> they're leaving. They're they're leaving the the high taxes here as well. There, you know, I saw the top ten. I don't know if you saw that. There's a uh, who is it? Um, can't think of the Economist, but he he studies U-Haul rates and the top ten places. Nine are in California, and one is New York City. And um, you know, it's the cost of living. It's all those other problems. Anyway, go ahead. Far away. Exp. Yeah, I think, you know, followed uh, the best of KW's playbook where, you know, Glenn was uh, a student of Gary Keller. He has high regard for Gary Keller. And then he added this, you know, unusual, interesting dimension of virtual. Uh, I don't know how well that works, but I think, you know, he was a tech guy that used to come to connect year in and year out with a new business plan, a new idea. And I love the guy. He's just a classic nerd. You know, all the nerds come to connect and they love connect. It's part of their family. And because, you know, Connect has the big shots and has the active realtors, the broker owners, it has everybody. But, you know, in the early days, the tech kids all came to us. That became their community. Kind of like after 2008, the new brokers went around and looked and said, who, who do I have affinity with? And they found Inman and they in that community, they found a, a home, you know, different than some of the, the traditional who were more association inclined. Uh -huh. And, you know, he came and came and came. And so he brought technology to the KW Playbook. And now I think theoretically he's positioned very well with the virtual model uh, more than anybody. Inman went virtual four years ago and it certainly prepared us not to miss a beat. And when this all hit and so seemingly that would give him some advantage. So I'd say agile. Agile. Yeah. I was actually doing a training uh, in the, in their, their virtual uh, cloud for uh, a group this week, KW. Super smart guys and very opportunistic. All right. And last one. And I, I, I'm the first 
I say never talk politics, so I'm not asking personal opinions, but I'm asking real estate related. Uh, as you know, the elections this year, in November, which candidate do you think will be better for housing real estate, Trump or Biden? Yeah, I don't really know. I mean, I do know one thing. A lot of people, it's really smart people I know, are looking back to the decade of the 50s, which was a decade, not of racial equality by any means, but more economic equality. My dad owned small businesses in Southern Illinois, and he got paid maybe three or four times what his highest paid clerk made. And then suddenly the financialization of the US economy, primarily with Wall Street, um, and Wall Street had a role back then, and Wall Street has an important role to capitalize companies. Uh, and I don't want to in any way disparage that. But somehow we kind of, through the Reagan years, through the Clinton years, through the Bush years, through the Obama years, we kind of gave the economy off and we had this huge spread. Uh, I'm reading a, a book now by Deutsche Bank, and it's just amazing how things got out of control. And in the hands of the wrong people. And I don't wanna like replay the, the face off between Wall Street and Main Street, but face it, the real estate industry is Main Street. You know, we're about what? Getting people into their home at a local level with a local realtor, someone that's in that community and knows that community. And so I think most people here can relate to this. And, th and this isn't an old guy reflecting on the great 50s because there were a lot of problems. You know, back in the day, you got a free education at a decent school. You got into a university free and didn't have to pay any tuition. Um, you could buy a house because it was affordable. You could get a VA and FHA loan, um, but it was a reasonable thing. You had to put down a down payment. There are just so many things. There wasn't this great divide between the super rich. And I think anyone that takes office now um, has to be trying to achieve those higher goals for our country. And a lot of small, smart people on Wall Street are talking about this. And a lot of smart people are talking about this prior to the COVID. But I think COVID gets an opportunity to reflect back on what's important. And so I think a little economic equality. So I'd like to see whoever it is. And if you think, why was Trump elected? And why was Bernie Sanders so popular? Because that diminished middle class was pissed off. They were angry, very, very angry. And whether they pick left or right, and, and I don't want to be partisan about this at all. It just makes people angry. But the reason they did is because they were really upset and they didn't think the establishment, the kind of financialization kingpins were aligned with the old guard politicians from Reagan to Clinton to Obama to Bush. All of them, every single one of them was tied to Wall Street and wouldn't give up and wouldn't go after, you know, they would go after maybe prosecuting some crimes. But let me give you an example. I covered the savings and loan crisis in the 80s. And well over 1,500 people went to jail. Corporate people went to jail. Uh, famous ones, you know, Charles Keating in Arizona. Do um, you know how many people went to jail with the subprime crisis? I'd say under 100. Zero. And they went after one middle manager, some um, countrywide person. Now think about that. You can do whatever you want. And then the companies, what Treasury does now is they, they find the companies and they pay billions of dollars and they, they claim victory. But the way to punish people if they do wrong, whether you rob a grocery store or you point a gun at someone or you rip off, you know, millions of Americans, <laughs> you go to jail. Mm -hmm. And so that's just, to me, that's a symbol, symbol of why something went wrong. Um, and again, one of the guys that talks about this a lot now is Pat Stone, who very, very wealthy man who did extremely well in his life. And he goes back, he's a historian, and he looks back at the financialization of the country. And this isn't some political statement. This is like, I think we all know this, you know? We gotta get this right. And by the way, there will be more luxury home buyers. You know why? Because the aspiration to get ahead will be stronger uh, if you have a system where you feel like you can get ahead. And if you can get ahead, then you're gonna make some money and you're gonna buy a fancy house. So this, we're all in this together to do this right. So my preference to the political candidate is someone who's willing to start talking about this. Um, and it is a socialist um, and it's, it, it embraces capitalism and it embraces free market. We just got, and that's how the country operated in the fifties, but it was more fair, Michael. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Did I preach? I felt like I was preaching there. 
No, you weren't at all. And you were neutral, which I liked it. Uh, so what I want to do is I just want to remind those of you that maybe jumped on late. We're going to be putting the replay. We'll drop the link in, but go to Inman.com for information on June 2nd to the 4th. Again, Connect is coming to you. Normally, as Brad mentioned, you got to get a plane, you got to get a ticket, hotel, all this. You got $1,500, $2,000 $2, in cost. Again, if you're a select member, it's 50 bucks. If you're not a select member, you get a three month trial, go to inman.com. And then the daily dispatch, I've listened to your episodes. You've had some great people on some powerful people. Brad's got an, uh, an awesome podcast. So Brad, I know you're busy. It was a oh. pleasure to have you on. Uh, thank you again. Keep raising Michael, you do really good work. You know what I like about you too? It's obviously you were a realtor. You're really persistent. And I've gotten older where I'm not as persistent as I used to be, but I, I just would never give up. And I love people that don't give up. And I think that's the message to the dog day summer of 2020 is just don't give up game. Be persistent. Go out there, push, push, push. And, and Michael's a guy, he persisted in getting me on, on his show. And, you know, if someone persists enough with me, then I'll do what they want. And it's like anything, persist with your clients. Yeah. Um, and, uh, that, that's the way to do it. So congrats on your success, Michael. And I Thank love you. your hat, Lux. That's pretty cool. Thanks. Hey, my shirt today, talk about persistence, is prove them wrong, right? So that's one of my you sayings, do. Brad, prove like them that. wrong. I love when people say you can't do something. You know, I listened to Sherry Chris recently, and she talked about when she, you know, helped launch the Better Homes and Garden brand, and others in the industry said that won't work. You know, you're, it's never going to work. I love proving others wrong. I love when people say you can't do it, but go ahead and make the world a better place. She said, be kind, be loving, you know, raise the bar, and go make someone's day. Brad, I really appreciate it. Say adios for me, and I we'll will. talk to you soon. Adios. Good luck right. to you, Michael. Thank you. Appreciate you.